Hello and welcome back to another installment of Pokefodder. In this video, we are going to be talking about the upcoming common, rare, epic, skilled tournament in Jurassic World Alive. But before I get into the top 10 creatures that you're going to want to look at for this weekend's tournament, I do want to remind everybody that I am live streaming on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Fridays will be geared towards this weekend's tournament, so that means tomorrow I will be breaking out my team, talking about some strats, putting some new creatures into live game battle because we do have new epics that this will be their first time I get to actually see them in action. And to make sure you know when I go live on Twitch, make sure you are following me on Twitter. Links as always are in the description below. Now I feel like I need to put out a disclaimer before I get into the top 10 creatures. The ranking of the top 10 creatures is a result of the Game Press Battle Simulator. The simulator is going to spit out the results of battles one on one, but remember this is more of a four on four type game. So keep that in mind whenever I go over the top 10 creatures. Another thing to keep in mind is team chemistry. There are going to be creatures that are not in the top 10 that you should probably run on your team. For example, Stegoceratops is not going to be listed anywhere on the top 10, yet it is going to be a vital component in this tournament. The reason being is because of its ability to come in off the bench, do damage, and stun your opponent. Additionally, the simulator has some limitations. Creatures that rely on swapping out or swapping in are not going to be accurately represented in the simulator because this is, again, a one-on-one -on -one type situation. Hence why I say something like Stegoceratops is going to be a vital component to your team build, even though it's not going to show up as one of the top 10 creatures. And one final bit of information I feel is important to these results is the fact that they didn't just take how the creatures did across everything. No, what they did is they took the top 20 and then re-ran the simulator of these creatures versus all of the top 20 to come up with the final results. So now that we have all that taken care of and you know what you are getting in this video, let's talk about the top 10. Checking in at the number 10 spot is one of only two non-hybrids in Allosaurus Gen 2. This creature is going to actually lose more than it wins with a win rate of 47%, but a loss rate of 49%. Coming in at the number nine spot is Edmonto Guanadon. While only winning 38% of its battles, it only loses at a 6% clip. But the real value here for this particular creature is going to be its 38% swap outs. With its ability to swap in and stun and then regen and run, this is going to be a creature you want to look closely at as a possible key component to your overall team build. Despite losing one of its rampage moves, Brontolasmus still checks in at number seven with a 46% win percentage. Megalogaia is going to check in at number six, also winning 46% of its battles, but having key components to being a speed control creature that is definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with. Coming in just outside the top five is the only new creature on this list. Intellichops is going to win at a 48% rate and it is the only creature on the top 10 that has the new revenge ability. Kicking off the top five is going to be Post Metrodon. It is the first fully immune creature on the list and it is going to win at a 55% rate. As the lone counter attack creature, Puritaurus is going to be just outside the top three at the number four spot. With a versatile toolkit that can cleanse, distract, and a nice counter attack to boot. This is going to be a creature that you're going to want to pay close attention to when you're facing and one that you're definitely going to want to have on your team. Checking in at number three is going to be the bane of most people's existence and that is going to be Proceratomimus, better known as Yoshi. Tied with blue for the fastest creature available in this particular tournament, Yoshi is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Between its immunity, its nullification strike, and its distracting rampage, you are definitely going to want to carry at least one, if not two, counters to Proceratomimus. Coming in at number two and the creature with the highest win percentage at 77%, is Sarko Rixies. If you do find yourself up against this particular creature, make sure that you do not try to swap out because it does have the no escape ability. And finally, the number one creature on the list is going to be Indominus Rex Gen 2. Now, while it only wins 75% of its head-to-head -head battles, which is less than Sarko Rixies 77%, it only loses straight up to 9% of other creatures. Between Mutual Fury and Cloak, you're definitely going to have your hands full when you face off against this creature. So there you have it. 
the top 10 creatures for this weekend's tournament. But remember, like I said before, do not just go with the top eight creatures. You need a well-rounded team. You're going to want to create openings on your team for other creatures like Stegoceratops, like Majungaboa, because while these creatures don't rank inside the top 10, they do very well countering some of those in the top 10. And for a more comprehensive look at this tournament and some of the matchups, make sure you check out Game Press. Links will be in the description below. If you found this information useful, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. While you're there, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the alert notifications so you know when the next video drops here on YouTube. That's all I've got for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time. But let's read the update. It says, Hello DPG members. To kick off your weekend, like I said, this came out late last week, we are ecstatic to share that our Jurassic World Live team is hard at work to bring you a new update this summer. Now when they use the term summer, your guess is as good as mine as to what they actually mean. Do they mean when 